It's Song Talk Radio. Welcome to Song Talk Radio. This is the show with songwriters talking to other songwriters about the craft of songwriting. We share tips, tools, and techniques, and together we all become better at writing songs. I'm your host, Neil Modi, and with me, my co-host, Phil Emery. How are you, Phil? I am doing well from surprisingly sunny and warm St. John's. Oh, very good. Yeah, you're out in the east where everyone else got hammered with a mass monster hurricane, and here in Toronto, it's been raining for like the last two days. So. I know, it was, it was sunny in 22. Nice. <laughs> very good. All right. And please send your comments and questions or weather reports to at Song Talk Radio on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, or feedback at songtalk.ca for the email, and we'll share your thoughts on the show. And please visit us at songtalk.ca to see the show post for this episode, to find links to things we mention, and to download lyric and chord sheets to follow along with the songs that we feature. And uh, tonight, we're happy to have with us uh, Angela Saini, the return of Angela Saini, um, Indian, Austrian, Canadian country folk pop artist Angela Saini is all about second chances and empowering others. She uplifts and inspires audiences with sing-alongs and storytelling about courage and finding joy in surprising places. BBC Radio has called the positive and upbeat songstress massively talented. Angela is most known for her sunshine-soaked song, Living on the Bright Side, and she's performed for festivals in Canada, such as Home County in London and the Philadelphia Folk Festival. Angela also has over 20 years of professional songwriting and performance experience, including seven years as a formal songwriting instructor, coach, and mentor. She currently teaches songwriting at Trevis Institute in Toronto, and she coaches new and established songwriters to help fine-tune their creations, ensuring the best possible message and musical expression. And uh, tonight we're doing something a little different. Uh, Angela is going to be sharing some early sketches of some new songs that she's currently working on, and we're going to be discussing ways to develop your songs past uh, the initial idea. So welcome back to Song Talk Radio, Angela Saini. Hello, hello. How are you guys doing? We're doing pretty good. It's great to have you back Amazing. on the show. It's yeah, been, nice been, to be back. It's been, it's been a while. Thanks Definitely for, for listeners, check out Angela's earlier episode. She's been on the show uh, several times. So um, going back a few years. So definitely check out those episodes. They're really great um, stuff. Um, before we get into the meet of today's show, there's a couple of things. We we had um, uh, singer-songwriter Matt Zaddy on the, on the uh, podcast last week. Do you know Matt? Angela? I love Matt. Yeah, okay, great vibes, <laughs> amazing musician. Yeah, I was happy yeah, to see you on the show. Yeah, he's a super talented guy. And and during that show, he mentioned uh, we took we somehow we got around to talking about cover songs. And he mentioned um, the band a perfect a perfect circle who did a cover of John Lennon's Imagine song. And and the discussion came about because a perfect circle had done a cover of the song, but they turned everything into like like minor chords and minor melodies. Um, and really twisted the song in, until, I don't want to say it's unrecognizable, but... I was going to say it's almost unrecognizable. It's almost unrecognizable. Almost. And, and, yeah. and, it re- and it reminded me of something. We had we had a discussion a, a number of years back on the show when Blair Packham was on the show about top lining and how he, he, was, he was saying, like, at least from a legal standpoint, the song is not the chord progression. The song is not the beat. The song is the melody and the lyrics. And Phil, you had pointed out at that point that... You know, often jazz covers, for example, they'll they'll reharmonize the crap out of everything, right? They'll keep yeah. the melody and the lyrics the same, but they'll reharmonize. And because I was trying to argue that I came up with a, a chord progression on the piano and then a singer sang a melody and lyric on top of it. So of course it's part of the song. But the the you know, but it, it raises these questions in my mind about how do you how do you how do you establish the identity of a song? Is it is it just the lyric and the melody? Is it Everything around the lyric and melody all together. I mean, is it, it 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 really gets into this kind of existential question for me about you know what what's what's the identity of song, especially with cover songs. How far can you go before you no longer call it you know a cover song, or is it a or is it a reimagining of the song, or is it a re, you know a reinterpretation of the song to the point like you say, Angela, like it's almost unrecognizable, almost unrecognizable. Yeah. But because it's such that's a popular song. That's interesting what you say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's interesting what you say about um, what Blair said about the chords not being, you know, technically songwriting. I'm not sure. And, and I know, and I, you know, we, I mean, my students ask me this all the time. 
um, I think the the jury is a little bit out on what is like a copyright, right? Like yeah. there is no set in stone rule. Um, I would argue that I think Blair I, has a very good point that, I mean, it's obviously the lyric is first, right? Lyric is something copyrightable, if that's a mm-hmm. word, and the, and the melody. However, I think the chords, you know, are very important to the song, as we can see by this example with the perfect circle, because when you change the chords to such a degree, and can you remind me, do you guys know, was the melody, because the melody doesn't, didn't seem exactly the same. It the went with the of, chords. The rhythm of the melody is the same, but the, some of the intervals are different because they're minor melody, yeah. they're minor intervals. Because it had to go with that new chord structure. Exactly. exactly. So, yeah. So it's, yeah. A little bit, it's a little bit twisted. And, 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 and probably the shape of the melody is similar enough. Where it goes up, it still goes up, but it might go up a minor third instead of a major third. <laughs> yeah, it followed right? the yeah, it fit with the chord, the chord structure. Yeah, it would have to fit with the chords. I I, I argue that you know I think um, you know you can't copyright chord progressions. I mean that's definitely true. I mean there's like twelve notes in a scale, right? So you can't, you definitely can, and that's been thrown out in court anyway. But hmm. I have a lot of people who ask that question about like you know, is this ripped off or is this ripped off or when, how, when do I need to like start, you know, mailing? Did you guys ever do that back in the day? You mail the songs to yourself with the registered mail. And yeah. I used to do that all the time because right, I was right. so worried about people stealing my songs when I was younger. I mean, I, I mean, no one wants their so- song stolen, but it's just an interesting thing you brought up that I just wanted to jump on there. I'm like, Oh, I wonder, yeah, yeah. is that true? You know, because it, this, a perfect circle cover brings up that exact point of when is the song, the song still, but I mean, lyric, mm. we can't deny the lyric is, you know, that is something copyrightable, as we know. Right. And and they didn't touch the lyric. They they left the Yeah. Lyric and the rhythm, lyric. as you mentioned, now that I think about it, the actual phrasing of the lyrics were the same. Um, just the, but the melody. Wow. That was wild. For those of you who are listening, if you haven't heard, did you play it on the last show? It was We didn't, such we didn't a, play it. He mentioned it. And then I searched it and, and I listened and to it. And thank you like, for wow. sending it to me because yeah. I think it's a great example of like, where does songwriting start and where does it end? Right. Yeah. That's really the question of that. It's yeah. just amazing to me. But that, yeah, that version is so, it's powerful though. It's so um, like almost if, if Imagine by John Lennon is, you know, this sort of optimistic, even though it's a bit maybe somber sounding um, optimistic kind of ideals. I think this version by a perfect circle is like almost dystopian. It's just like, it, it, it's all, it gives you the opposite feeling by the chords, the way that they, really um it, it's almost like upsetting <laughs> like listen and i actually yeah. really like it i really like a perfect circle back in the day when i was a total rocker i loved you know um maynard he, he's a singer in tool and i used to love tool you know there's rock band and their songs are great but um i kind of it, it made me like a little upset listening to the song it really was a downer to me and i was like yeah. wow like what a different song <laughs> something i wanted to throw out to our listeners and yes. um angela as you as well um, every now and then, I uh, get uh, an ad for a songwriting contest that mm. uh, people want you to enter. And I'm my idea of this is that these are just basically little sort of businesses that people have have uh, started because everybody, you know, all these people uh, submit their songs. They all pay like twenty five or fifty dollars to get it in, and they make some money. And there's nothing wrong with that. And then they have some people judging it. Something kind of like what maybe what we do, um, but I'd like to know if anyone uh, has entered in any of these contests and what your experience was, and uh, send those to feedback at songtalk.ca and uh, whether or not you think it was um, a worthwhile experience or just uh, or just a scam. Hmm. I don't know. I'd be to... interested to hear what people think on that. Yeah, you, you've never done that, Angela. I certainly have. Um, so my, I, I have, um, I have entered some of those contests and I will say, um, I'm treading carefully here a little bit, but I think that there, it's just like a lot of things in the music business and, and songwriting is just one of those. I mean, you could look at, you know, Canadian Idol, or you could Mm. look at all these contests, you know, compete, like people competing right? Mm-hmm. Any kind of competition in the music business. And the one thing on that I, I can say, and I also mentor a lot of young people, and I was one of those too, where, you know, everybody's just got this pie in the sky, sort of, I want to be a star mm. kind of mentality. And there's, that's great. We need, you know, we need that in the world. That's how we are going to have the new generations. And that, 
is if that's compelling and that's what makes makes you go for your dreams, I'm all for that. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I do think there is a whole industry that sort of preys on that. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying that the songwriting competitions are are that, but there is a lot of money that gets made on the business end, and that's fine. Um, where people, you know, the, the when you look at how much prize money gets put out compared to how much money it caught, how much they probably took in, mm. it's pretty. And this is just coming from a business standpoint. It's like, wow, it's like ludicrous. It's like, wow, this is just a huge cash cow because everybody's like, all I need is that one award. You know, all I want is because as I can speak on this as an artist as well, we're end songwriters. We're constantly looking for validation. And that is one way to get it. You pay, you pay the fee. And if you know, and of course it is based on some merit. I'm not saying that it's, you know, you just pay your way in. That's definitely not the case. On the flip side, I will say um, my whole career in many ways was launched. um, My solo artist career was launched in some ways because of an award. And I didn't even win the award. Actually, I was the Mm. runner up um, Mm. for best female artist for the independent music awards. Now this was in 2010. So this is going back some time, but I was playing in bands. I was in two different bands. I was doing my solo thing kind of on the side, not really taking it that seriously. And that, award slash you know running I, I was a nominee i was the finalist so i did get an award right. i got like a little prize for that um it actually was a catalyst for me personally it did help uh it did launch me kind of like oh i got started getting other a few other accolades and this and that that really got me taking my solo career seriously it is a mm. big part of how i you know became mm, angela okay. Saini. i mean i've always been mm. angela Saini, but now i'm angela Saini. Artist, so yeah, yeah. those kinds of things can really change your career. So I will say okay. that on a personal front, it was something that did kind of catapult me leaning into, you know, t- taking more of my solo stuff seriously because people were really liking the songs I was writing and my, my rock band, you know, I'd been playing it for so many years and we, we had a lot of, you know, great triumphs as well, in my opinion, but nothing to that extent. And so it can be a game changer for a songwriter. Um, However, I will say on the flip side, from a business standpoint, I've been very wary um, since then of really spending all that money. Because when you look at, and I won't name them, but I, you know, I know of the big major songwriting prize, uh, you know, awards. Um, most of them, when you look at the people who are winning them and what happens and what the what the cash prize, like it's not it's not doing a lot. It's really just something great that looks good on your bio. Hmm. Um, so there's a there's there's validity to it. Of course, these are great songs, and sometimes I go and check them out. I'm like, oh yeah, fantastic too. Like amazing. I'm glad they got recognition for that. The money part, I think, is what really gets me because some of them. I, I mean, I won't. I've I've considered doing some of them again, and I look and I'm like, wait a second. They're only the cash prize is, you know, like five hundred dollars. But they have all these, like, you know, maybe they're just paying all the judges all these thousands of dollars they're raking in from all the, you know, submission prices. Like, so that's just me being, you know, maybe a bit um, wary of from the business side of things. But good for them. I mean, they're obviously, some of them are really great and they've really launched people's careers. So you can't poo poo on them all, but I, I will say they've been good and they've been bad to yeah. me as well because I've, I've got runner-up things and other things and it didn't amount to anything so like, right yeah. right and, and and like you say it, it really depends on the context of of your current situation and where you're looking at in your career tra- trajectory and exactly all sorts of what are you going to do you, with it like yeah exactly. and how much is it going to mean will, to you <laughs> exactly and i will say and i shouldn't i shouldn't say you know that they're not all great in some ways because i did i did actually a song on my last record did get again i didn't win but as a top five finalist for best alt country in the international music Mm -hmm. awards. So to me, it was like that nice bit of that validation, but most importantly, what did I do with that? I just put, you put it on your bio and that's, you know, for a songwriter, whether an artist or not, that's like, okay, it gives you some credibility because that's really how the industry. (laughs) Yeah. That's how the industry works, unfortunately. But I just feel like from the money standpoint, you're like, wow, I just spent, I talked to someone a few years ago about this and they're like, Oh yeah, I spent like, $800 $800 just on submission costs for like two mm. or three of these in, the, you know, from their new little yeah. catalog for that year. And I was like, wow, that's, that's, that's a whole song you could record with that money. You know, like yeah. it's when you think of like the cost of that. Or you could pay yeah. um, a publicist to help you get on shows like song talk radio or, <laughs> <For example>. yeah, <laughs> yeah. or something like yeah. that. So it's, 
I guess maybe it's with, with any of these things, and I'd love to hear from our listeners and, and what your experience has been, is just to, you know, be realistic and realize that, you know, just entering into something you may not, you may not win, but actually even having a goal and finishing something off and doing the submission and going through all that, there's a certain value to that. Sure. Mm -hmm. But if you're if you're not making any money off of your music and you're spending eight hundred dollars a year on submissions, maybe just do one or two a year, possibly. You know? Yeah, I think there's definitely like you got to weigh out the pros and the cons. So I'm not for or against all of these things. I just think you have to really weigh it out. Like, is it worth it? And what do I? What will I get from this? Yeah. You know, just like any decision you make in in your in your career. So. Yeah. Well, anyway, congratulations on all your little accolades. And, and oh, <laughs> thank you. We, okay. We've really dug in deep here on yeah, yeah, topics. Right. Yeah. Great. A couple yeah. of different directions there. Okay, let's yeah. get in, let's get into the the main the main reason you're here. Um, we want to talk about <laughs> a bunch of songs because you you posted on Facebook a little while ago about oh, I'm working on a bunch of songs and you're and kind of contemplating what what step two is for a bunch of these songs. And I know a lot of a lot, a lot of especially beginner songwriters, they hear stuff on Spotify, they hear stuff on the radio, and you're, and, and even even if you're a, 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 a veteran songwriter, you're always hearing the final version of a song. You're never hearing the iterations and the blood, sweat, and tears that went into, you know, bad first drafts and all the sort of, you know, stuff that that's the messy part of songwriting where, you know, you go through stuff and it's, and it's not that great. And you're always constantly trying to improve it and improve it. Cause I know Angela from conversations we've had in the past that you're very, and because you teach the stuff too, you're very much on the craft side of songwriting and you employ tools and you know how to push the envelope in that sense of, of, you know, when, when you get stuck, you know what to do to push it forward and, and really make it and make it happen. Right. It's not easy. And no. I will say, even for me, like I have songs that I just completely abandoned and mm -hmm. I feel guilty, you know, like that mom who just like, it's like, no, you're not my favorite. Just go over in the corner. I'm never going to look at you again. <laughs> and it's mom. like some, sometimes we just have to. And again, I, I obviously everything from my point of view is I'm an artist and songwriter. Some people who are songwriters and maybe aren't the singer of those songs, they might approach it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, and I think we've talked about this a little bit, Neil, and maybe in some of the other shows, is like I'm very artist centric uh, in my songwriting approach. I've done, you know, I've gone to Nashville and done the co writing camp thing and all of that. And those are super fun and you learn a lot and they can be super valuable. Um, however, from an artist standpoint, some of those songs I look back on and I'm like, there's just not enough Angela in these songs. They just, mm. they're just sort of like, let's crank it out. We've got three hours and you have to finish the song and you kind of like make compromises or at least I saw them as compromises because it's like, that's not what I would say, or that's not how I feel or that's, and then kind of when the session's over and you're like, great, let's hand it to the publisher. Like the song's done. I'm kind of like, but it's not done, <laughs> you know? And so that's sort of how I approach songwriting, which is why maybe it's such a labor to get it just right. So by the point where it gets to, you might hear it in a public space, you know, and I think all songwriters should do this actually, where you've really gone through and, and, and I just talked about this today in my class. I, there's a term that in the studio, so I've heard a lot of producers use is cut the fat. And it's like, mm -hmm. not the nicest term, but the term cut the fat really means is like, if you have a four minute song, does it have to be four minutes? Is there some parts we can cut down? But more importantly, I think from a songwriting perspective, not just the arrangement or the production is the, the words themselves, you know, can we take out some of the syllables or is there a better way to say this? Or was I really clear when I, you know, when I said this one line. So before any time before I'm about to record anything, I go through the songs like with a fine tooth comb, I really try to think like, what, is there a better way to say this? Is this clear? Um, you know, I might get other people listen to it. Um, can you tell me what you got from it? Like, what do you think this song is about? You know, just to make sure that it's really clear so that, because as we know, as songwriters, it makes perfect sense in our head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we know what the song is about, <laughs> but when you play it for someone else, do they know what the song is about? I mean, if we look at hit songs, it's usually undeniable. But our songs, it's important to kind of put the mirror back on it going like, is, do you get the gist of what I was trying to say? You know, that's really, really important. 
So that that's not step two, back to, you know, what you were kind of talking about, Neil, but mm -hmm. um, that's maybe step five or 10 or 20, depending on how the process goes, because every and song then, and is how many, different. And then every song takes a different number of steps. <laughs> exactly. They definitely do. Yeah. And it's so cool because you bring that up. Um, the post on Facebook a month or two ago was I had started three songs in the same day. Like, I, you know, we all have those moments, those days where we're just on fire. Like, I mm. just, I think one of them I was like walking, because I do a lot, ooh, actually this will come up in what we're talking about. Uh, I have a dog. So when I walk my dog, I have a lot of marinating time. Mm -hmm. So I'm either listening to my voice memos on my phone. Sometimes I, if I'm really into a song, I'll just listen to it back a bunch of times while I'm walking because I'm doing something else. Um, and then I think the value in doing something like that, actually some, a ment someone that I'm mentoring right now, her songs, I told her, I said, before we want to record anything, listen to it in the shower, listen to it while you're doing dishes, listen to it while you're not focusing on the song, because that's how your listener is listening to it. Your listener is listening to it, not with a lyric sheet, awesome. not with like going through with a fine tune comb. Your listener is listening to it maybe while they're driving to work or while they're mm. so for me, it's, that's a really important step. And again, this isn't step two, but sometimes it is step two. For example, one of the songs that I had kind of started in that day we were just talking about recently was something that kind of just popped into my head while I was walking the dog. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I sing it into my phone, put it away, and then go back to it later. Um, now the question, I guess, the theme of today is like, what do you do you with do it next? when you come back to it later? Yeah. yeah. Because inspiration, as as hard as it is to believe, inspiration is the easy part. Mm. Like we're yeah. we're all creative people. We all have ideas that pop into our heads, and that's the inspiration. That's actually the easy part, in my opinion. Um, I mean, not easy, but it's the part that comes the the, the easiest. Let's mm -hmm. say it that way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, what do you what do you do with it? So, for me, um, when I have so many songs on the go, I find that's a real detriment personally. So with that post where I was like, I have these three new songs I started in one day, I was actually like all over the place. I didn't know which one to focus on. Um, I would prefer to be inspired with one idea and then, you know, develop it forward. So that was a little bit of a crazy, uh, crazy thing. So but for the most part, two, you like you, you, you like to take one song, run with it, finish it, and then get on to the next one? Is oh, that you I'm definitely not finishing it necessarily. Okay. That's the one thing. And I think, I hope that this will help maybe uh, give some people in the, the, the audience a little uh, sigh of relief because it's completely normal to just not finish the song. Like, I, I, would, I would love for people to just be like, oh, it's okay that I always die at the bridge. Because for me... I'll always have the verse and the chorus or like, I'll continue till I have the two parts for sure. Mm -hmm. It's like, I have a song now, like there's something here. Mm -hmm. um, for me, the bridge or this, you know, whatever part it might be, the finishing part sometimes can take a while. It has to marinate in my brain. Again, I might listen to it. I might make a bunch of changes before I even get to the bridge. Um, and like I said, some songs just get completely abandoned. Mm -hmm. um, but that's also... For me, it's just because I have quite a bit of a repertoire already um, on like on a published end. Like I just have a lot of songs I've released. So for me, um, I'm constantly, you know, trying to gauge like, is this as good as blank, blank, blank? Is this as good as, you know, some of my other repertoire? And I don't necessarily suggest that everyone does this. But unfortunately, I only have so much time and resources to really follow through on a song. So if I don't think the chorus because again, the chorus is the most important part of the song. Um, if the chorus doesn't like totally hit or doesn't have that same oomph as some of my other tunes, I kind of go like, mm, I'll put this aside. Maybe I'll come back to it later. And sometimes I never do. So again, not step two. Is that a call you can make yourself though? That's a good question. That's a good question. I think um, for me, especially because, I haven't done a ton of co-writing in the, since the pandemic, I'll be honest, like just a handful. So I'm generally writing alone now, at least lately. Um, I, I think that's a good point where maybe sometimes I might give up on a song too early. I'm sure I have done that, to be honest. And mm. luckily, you know, I have, I kind of, I have it there. It's in my folder. I, I can go back to it. Um, but I really, for me, it's important. I, I want to finish the songs that I'm really gung ho on, you know, like I want to finish the songs that I'm excited about. And I go, Oh yeah, this is like, you know, whatever that je ne sais quoi is that Scott yeah, something. Yeah. 
And those are the ones I finish first. And then every, you know, I kind of have to prioritize that way. Yeah. But that's a great question, Phil. I mean, because you're right. Like, I'm sure there are songs that I have that maybe have some legs. I just haven't let them run yet. Yeah, yeah. Because like you say, from 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 the point of inspiration, from the original, original initial idea, and then by the time you get into the song and then start really editing at that point, I feel I feel like I feel like you're more objective at that point. In the early stages, it's very subjective. So if you if you abandon a song early, it's it's probably just a gut feeling that this this ain't working. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah. maybe it's also, I didn't try hard enough. I mean, it's possible too. Enough, that, but, but it is a sort yeah. of thing where if you hand it to another songwriter, they may see something in it that you didn't and they could run with it and, and really make something special out of it. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. I mean, it's like a pair of pants, right? I might have a pair of pants that I'm like, oh, I don't really like these and, you know, make my hips look wide or whatever it is. And it's like, you give them to someone, so like, these are my favorite pants ever. I wear them every day, you know? <laughs> So it's kind of a weird analogy, but sort of the same kind of thing, right? Yeah. It was a great idea for a song. How many bands have, you know, their big hit is, is a song they absolutely hate. Like Radiohead yes, hates hear that. Creep. Yeah. And they always hate yeah. it. They hated it in the studio. So mm. sometimes yeah, right. just because you don't like it, it may still be a good song. You just don't like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, mm. that's definitely true. That's definitely true. I think it's important, like you, like you were just saying, Neil, I think it is important to let it breathe at least a little bit. Mm. Um, and, and like, I'm looking at, cause I, I knew today what we were, the topic was, and I'm looking at all these unfinished songs. I have sheets and sheets and sheets on my desk here in front of me. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Like, and most, like one of them I think is done. Um, it's not at the point of like real performance polish yet, but I think the song is done and I have pretty much everything else. It's like half done, not even barely started kind mm-hmm. of like verse chorus. Oh, this one's terrible. You know, like I, I have quite a, you know, and that's the thing. How do you, and for me, I guess I just go in priority of like, which one makes me excited. Let's work on that one until I can't finish until it's finished or until I can't work on it anymore. And then I'll start to go to something else. Let's try and get a little more specific. And, and by specific, it's, it, it's, it's weird because I, I said this on the podcast a, a little while ago that sometimes you or oftentimes you start a song and you have to listen to what the song wants next. So there's no hard and fast rule about what step two is. It depends on what step one was. <laughs> I think. It depends it, on the song too. It depends yeah, on the exactly. song. It depends completely on the song. Yeah. So why don't we take one example from from you, Angela? Maybe one that you you started and you got some inkling as to what what the next step is going to be. Um, yeah, this is fun. Um, <laughs> I'll start with I'll start with something I would never normally do, but I think okay. I think this is uh, literally the only time I would ever share a voice memo because it's not even good. I'll tell you right now. I listened to it before we started the podcast, and I was like, mm-hmm. Ooh, "My voice is not it's not there." <laughs> but I think um, it's just a good example, and this this yeah. isn't even necessarily a well, it is a step two in some ways, but it just kind of gives the listeners an idea of like how a song can change really mm-hmm. quick too right. from inception to even just oh here's like this is just the chorus because this song is like i think it's a chorus and that's literally all i have this is one okay. of the ones um but i i thought it might be something i don't know how often people play voice memos on the show but this is very very strange for me but i think kind of exciting at the same I, time I think, I think blair might have where he had yeah notes or something yeah <laughs> so um I, I don't play piano well. I'm not really a piano player, but I had this little stint where I was kind of really getting into it. And for some reason, I had this little chord progression. And I, I don't even know really what this is, but this is dated March 27th. So this is not new, but this was the beginning of where I'm at now. So I'm going to just find it really quick here because we got talking. and um, um, There's a lot of stuff in my voice memos. So this started out, I will give you a little side note. Um, well, maybe I'll... No, well, I'll just play this first. Okay. Here we go. Well, you, do you want to say what the idea of the song was? Like, Yeah, you know, I will. I will, because that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, it's a deep topic, actually, but um, okay. my best friend has been um, battling cancer since mm-hmm. last October, and she was in, she was in the hospital for nine months, mm-hmm. and it's been wild. I did go visit her in Saskatoon, and she's out of the hospital now, and she's you know, still fighting it out. And she's an amazing, amazing human. She's been my best friend since I was six years old. Wow. And, um, 
I'm trying to think of what the lyrics are and what I'm going to play for you. But, but I wrote, so here's what happened. I wrote the lyric down as, as, as something for her. So supposed to be a song to her or about her? Yeah, it was something inspired. I had, I think it was right when she got, oh no, she was still in the hospital. I just felt like writing something down as like, I'm going to write a song for her. Like it was just the intention was there. Okay. Um, so I wrote the lyrics down and it was just that no chords. No, it was just like something that rhymed that I felt at the time. It's, um, like six lines. It's just some, it's just something I wrote down and, um, I'm going to play you something. And again, this is, this isn't necessarily step two, but this is just a fun way to see how, you know, you can connect the dots, right? Right. Like things you can start somewhere and end up somewhere completely different. Right. Right. So this is going to be terrible, but I'm pretty sure this is the piano thing that I came up with. Uh, okay. Keep on shining, don't lose hope. You are loved more than you know. <laughs> Okay. So okay. that was it. Okay. So that was different chords than what I have now, but the lyrics are there. Mm-hmm. That was the okay. lyric. So first thing that happened was I wrote down the lyric as just like, that was the, the, the correct one. Um, as something I wanted to, you know, pen for her, just like as sort of a dedication the piano part came out of me just messing around on the piano because I'm not a piano player. Mm-hmm. And it was something like, oh, this sounds good. And then I kind of just sang that on top. Right. So then um, I'm going to play another snippet because it starts um, changing really quick, uh, probably because I'm not a piano player. So this, I think, is next. Uh, and again, I don't know how great this is, but this is kind of fun to play. Here is, we go. Is this, this where I don't you know. your guitar then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't oh, so not even guitar. Because you are loved more than you know. Just keep on dreaming. Don't stop the fight. You are not broken. So shine your light. Just keep on shining. You don't lose hope. Because you are loved more than you know. Just keep on dreaming. Don't stop the fight. You are not broken. So shine your light. Okay, so that was me singing in the air. Right. Um, I don't even know. That's definitely not the key that I eventually put it into. But that, I think, was me. um, I don't have the exact date in front of me when that was. But that was something, obviously, I was really interested in the lyric. Really want to kind of work on this song. Um, The sentiment is there. And I changed it into something completely different and just sang it in the air. Because I think this, if I'm correct, I think I came up with this sort of idea, like, again, while I was walking the dog or something. Like, it was Mm -hmm. something. And that's why I sang it in the air. There's no music. Right. And then uh, the last one I will share is um, I luckily put the chords in the voice memo. So at least I know what the heck I'm playing. Um, I just decided to put it in with the guitar. Probably something I was just messing around with. Just keep on shining. You don't know. Because you love the more you know. Just keep on dreaming. And then I think, yeah, just the guitar. So this was probably something that I was just kind of messing around with. Some super simple chords is uh, what G, C, D, G. Um, But then I put that melody to it. So now Mm -hmm. I'm on to something. Now, again, this is like over days and days and days marinating and working on a million other songs. But this one is important to me. Obviously, I want to finish it. Or it is, it's not something I'm going to just easily, you know, abandon or throw away. Um, and that's as far as I've got. That's literally, okay. but it just shows where it kind of went and then where it's, it is now. So yeah. that's not step two. I think I'm at step three or four now. But now it's like, okay, I'm really solid and set on that lyric. Yeah. Um, I love the melody. I think the chord structure is great. It's, you know, fits my music. It's kind of, you know, upbeat, boppy, you know, simple chords. I write pretty much, you know, folk pop music. Now it's like, okay, well, 
what's the rest of it? <laughs> what's I want to ask verse? a question. What are the... I'd like to ask, yeah. uh, ask a practical question. These voice memos, do you slate them? Like sort of saying, slate them, which is it's, it's a movie term about, you'd say, um, you know, the date, this is what it is, and this is the chords or anything like that. Or do you just mm. record the idea itself? Great question. So when I'm working with other people, funny, when I'm working with other people, I label everything because in case I have to email it to them or if they send it to their manager or something, it's kind of labeled and stamped with like the voice saying what's going on. When it's me, um, I don't do that on the audio, but I will say like, for example, that was called shine your light GCDG. So shine your light, meaning mm. that's probably going to be the title. These are the chords. Um, and I have a whole bunch of other versions that say shine your light something. I mean, th maybe not this song, but what I would do if you were to look at my voice, it's insane what's in my voice memos, but it would probably be if, the, if I were to keep working, shine your light V1. So version one or shine your light um, verse melody idea or mm -hmm. shine your light full song, shine your light capo two or whatever. Um, so I have the title in the actual ID, so I'll save it because I have to at least label it. Otherwise it's gone forever. I just have way too many things in there. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a great question. The reason probably why I don't think once in a while I do talk into it and say, okay, we're on capo two. And, and, and sometimes, especially if I have like a kind of, um, complicated guitar line, for example, where there's maybe some pull-offs or something where I, I might tab it out and, you know, notate it but I want to make sure I know how it goes. Then sometimes at the beginning of the audio track, like on my voice memos, I'll say, uh, G pull off here and do it all slow. So that when I go back to it, I'm like, Oh, that's how I played it. Um, so, so that is something I will do. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. it depends yeah. on, you know, like if, if it's something that I won't remember, um, and I do also use tab or I'll, I have like my own weirdo notation that I use to kind of remember when, when it's not just chords, when there's actual like little lead lines or, or pull off things or certain ways that I play a chord, mm -hmm. I'll notate that. One thing I think another reason why I don't necessarily do it in the audio is because I just don't want to hear my voice so much. Just like, okay, it's, you know, January 27th and we're on capo four and I'm playing this, you know, I just kind of rather it makes it easier to marinate and listen to the songs without having to hear that. So that's probably why subconsciously why I don't do it. Cause I'm like, Oh, it, 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 stop it almost, talking. It, it almost sounds like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's a question of what step two. I mean, you can label that however you like, but it, it, to me, it almost does sound like a step two in the sense of you hopped on the piano and you recognize that something isn't quite right with this. I need to, look at this again and that's when you just sang it in the air and you let the and you made a conscious decision maybe it wasn't conscious but it sounds to me like it was a conscious decision that i want to just let the melody govern what this thing is going to be mm -hmm. and how, and how yeah in this song then, it was all about the melody yeah that's yeah. right the chords came after which isn't always the case yeah. i will say probably and i know this is like you know the age-old question what comes first um, and there is no answer as we know as songwriters, we know there's no answer, <laughs> but I think for, for me, generally music does come first, okay. but once in a while, the melody will just pop in my head. I'm like, that goes in the voice memos right away. Very rarely is it lyrics first. I, I should, okay. I shouldn't say that. I have so many, so many notebooks of lyrics that I just need to put them to something. Cause they're, they're, I think great lyrics. Um, but I just like to noodle on the, I just like playing, I'm not a great guitar player by any means, but I really do like playing the guitar. So a lot of the times I'll just be, you know, just fooling around on the guitar. And then that's when the songs come where I just start humming and go, Oh, that's a, what about, Oh, what about? And you know, you know, you just follow that fun little, um, rabbit hole. That's how, where the magic happens, right? You just mm -hmm. kind of see what happens. So, so it, another, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, so what, what do you think is next? for this song when the next time you visit it? Um, I think the first thing I would do, and this is just sort of shows my process. I think now that I've got the general, I have the theme, I have the idea, I have the chorus. That's yeah, the most course, important yeah. thing. And I like it. So now I'm like, okay, great. Like that's my most, I don't always start with the chorus, but when I have a good one, it's like, okay, let's continue. So what I'm looking at is looking at the chords. I'd probably think, okay, what are some other chords I can play that would sound like a verse? And I would start with the music first. Hmm. And then I would go back um, and let the music dictate maybe what the melody is and then do the lyrics last in okay. this situation. 
Um, I could easily go back and do lyrics first, but the way that this is going, I just have this really strong one part. So I probably would go to the verses and go, okay, what would sound like a verse so that this sounds like a chorus? Yeah. Yeah. That's the first thing I would do music and then the lyric. Um, now another example, I have another song that's way more finished that I think, um, has its own story, which could be helpful. Um, Again, I like to just jam out on the guitar and just do whatever. So, for example, here's another tune. Um, I think I was just playing just for the, you know, just doing nothing. You know, when you're just playing, if you play an instrument, you're just doing, you're just noodling, noodling, jamming around. And I was just playing, you know, uh, well, I think I've changed the key, but let's just say it was F, C, G. So something super simple, just like. <laughs> like that little pull off thing and whatever it was was just like a nothing and i'm like oh that's cool i'll just bank that like it was just like it was a nothing thing and so this is kind of what happened with this song when you bank it you 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 recorded it as a voice memo on your phone then yeah this song to be honest because it's so simple to be honest i probably didn't but i do know that i had because that's the chorus of this song that i'm talking about now um, it's, I probably just wrote down FCG. I have no idea. It's just so simple that I probably yeah, didn't yeah. record it to be honest. But then I was actually playing my electric guitar. Um, mm. and I plugged it in my amp and I was just fooling around with some effects because I don't, again, I haven't been playing live for so long. And then I started getting some shows this year and starting getting back into playing live. Mm. And I was kind of like, Oh, I haven't played this pedal in a while. So I was, I think I was playing around with the delay on the pedal. Mm. And just, again, noodling, just for the fun of playing with the pedal. And I came up with this little lick of, I'll just play it. And then just repeat it. And it it sounded cooler with the delay on the electric guitar. Obviously, I'm playing an acoustic. Um, but I was like, oh, this is cool. This is like a fun little lick. And so I probably, and I haven't checked for the sake of the show, but I'm sure I recorded it and called mm. it, you know, pull off lick um, FCG because it's the same chords. Mm-hmm. So what happened with this song, I have this little lick and then I have this just simple strumming thing. And the chorus, uh, actually, I, they, these were kind of like two separate songs. So this is mm-hmm. kind of uh, kind of fun, again, just to show the process a little bit. Um, I can't, to be honest, I don't remember which one came first, but I definitely know I was playing this just for the fun of it, and I started, like, coming up with something. Just something simple that goes with the chords, right? So nothing mm. over the top, but I kind of had this little section and again, it's not super strong um, necessarily, but I had that kind of going in the background somewhere. But this little lick that I just played the kind of got my attention. It's like, oh, this like this cool little riff. Mm-hmm. And then I started uh, just playing just the simple so I could sing over it easily, right? And then I, this is what came out first. And then I, you know, keep going if I were to continue. Wait a second. This goes with... And then the melody actually continues, um, which I'll stop for a minute because I I can probably, I'll play that at the end. But I basically sandwiched, not sandwiched, but put together these two ideas because they're actually the same chords. It's just F, C, G. But then I I started working on the lyric, and this is what really tied it together. Mm. Um, as we, I'm sure all of us know at least one. Uh, well, we know lots of babies were born during the pandemic. Mm. We know lots of breakups happened during the pandemic, and people getting together. But um, some friends of mine unfortunately split during the pandemic, and 
this kind of came out of like this storyline. And so the chorus is um, like from, and again, this is coming from like just something, you know, you have, like we all do, we have conversations with people and we bank these ideas or we know how they feel or we, you know, we have, it's just by our relationships with others Mm -hmm. that we can kind of empathically like let that song just come out. So the chorus is, um, which again, I was like, okay, this is strong now. The melody from that little lick that I started with was the hook is what got me into it. But again, if I don't have a good chorus, I don't have a good song. Hmm. So this, at least in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so the chorus is, and then I started going stronger, going farther and farther with like, where else can I go with my voice? Because it would be boring to do the same thing four times. So um, I just naturally, and I'll just play the whole thing so you can hear how the melody kind of changes. Uh, so this is the chorus. You don't know how to love me anymore. Giving up life's between the world of dollars. One day I don't want it to be too late. I want to stay. Is it too late? And then we go to that link. Okay. Yeah, so, so that, it sounds like that was a very conscious thing to to not to to let it to, to have an evolution of that melody, like to have a change yeah. the morning and and kind of. And that's just something I do naturally. Um, yeah, like I, I I do love patterns, but I, like as I tell my students all the time, you gotta you gotta set the pattern, but you gotta break the pattern. Yeah. So very often, actually, not to let out my little secret, but <laughs> if you look at a lot of my songs. Um, very often the third line is where the melody will start to go, go off because that's where I'm like, well, what else can I do with my voice or what else can I, you know, where else can we go with this? Um, so I do generally like break the pattern and then I decided actually that was another, this is a step two thing, maybe a step four thing, but, um, I think I originally had just FCG through the whole chorus, which, which is, you know, simple, Mm -hmm. but somewhere along the way I was like, no, something needs to change. To kind of like you know give us you know like a not a, a tag difference. but just to change it right right and I, w- I went through a bunch of chords and you know like what would sound good and then uh what i did play i think it's a d minor f and then g um and of course the melody will you know follow that um so that that's something that again that wasn't the original idea the original idea is like i just got these simple chords here's this melody it goes really cool with the lick mm-hmm. again the lick is what got me was this thing mm-hmm. I just liked it. Like, it was just fun to play, to be mm-hmm. honest. I was like, well, this is, sure. and again, with the delay, it would sound better. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. But I just liked how it sounded, and then I just ran with it. And then I was like, oh, what about this? What about this? Oh, I should change the chords at the end. Oh, that's cool. That goes better going uh, going back into the to the F. Um, and then the melody, the, the melody was natural. It was the sort of like getting the storyline, which was, again, kind of the last thing. Mm-hmm. Um, for this one, not really, I shouldn't say it's the last thing, but it wasn't the first thing because sometimes the song, as you guys know, we're all, we always have some songs that start with the lyric, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but those yeah, are like more for, rare. For this one, for this one, you had the guitar lick and you had your la 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 melody. At that point, you didn't even know what the subject matter was, did you? No, no, I didn't. Not for this one. And mm-hmm. I had to, again, like to come up with a good melody, I, I couldn't play that, like, at least with, again, with my skills. If I was like this killer guitar player who can play licks and, sing all over it i mean maybe i could have but for me it was like okay now what so i just went to the simple chords and melody for me is actually quite easy uh it's my favorite part um because it's there's just the end the options are endless right yeah, you know, yeah, i just love sure. melody because you could sing anything i mean i just love that part do you, do, you, do you put any conscious thought into like okay so in, in that particular example now you you know that maybe the next step is to come up with the the lyrical content with the the idea at least for the lyrical content like if it's going to be about pandemic relationships and and whatnot is there some sense of the music feels like x so i want my lyric to feel like X, like in, as opposed to, mm. like I, I, I've done this, I've done this years ago once where I literally had a piano part that was pretty cool. And I liked it. And I had a lyric that was kind of neat that I liked that they were done very separately and they just kind of jammed them together. And then mm-hmm. when, I, when I brought it to the, to our songwriters meetup, people were telling me there was a real disconnect because the piano part was kind of upbeat and boppy and the lyric was really, really dark. <laughs> and, right. And, and there was I've had songs there. like that too. Yeah. I've had songs right. like that where 
um, what we're talking about is prosody, right? Like what yeah, like, yeah, like you, 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 yeah. you give that some consideration that that the, the musical yeah. content is, is pointing a certain way. So I want to do my lyric pointing in the same direction, or, or yeah, even the opposite think, direction on con- uh, you know consciously. Yeah, I think I think it because and it's funny that you say because the way that you wrote that song, you kind of were mashing two ideas together. So yeah. it's more light. It's more possible to have that lack of prosody, right? Because it was like, oh, well, I was thinking this when I wrote this and I'm thinking this. And I have had songs like that too. I've definitely Mm -hmm. had songs where people are like, or even for me, I'm like, these don't work, you know, but I'm trying to, you know, push, like push them together. I think naturally, um, because I think I just naturally, I don't, to answer your question, I don't think I put a ton of effort into it. Like this sounds like this. So the lyrics should sound like this. Um, I think I naturally try to, Mm -hmm. and if I do have, you know, maybe like a kind of sad little lick or some chord progression is kind of minor or something, I think I naturally go, I'm like drawn to tell a sad story, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think I do just subconsciously make them fit. Um, Mm -hmm. Like for example, living on the bright side again, which you meant, you know, it's one of my most well-known songs. Um, It's a really interesting song because you know, it's called living on the bright side. The chorus is really happy, but the beginning of the song starts on these minor chords. So it's basically the relative minor. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, it's, it's a weird, people have told me before, they're like, when you hear the beginning of the song, they don't think they're going to hear this, you know, boppy, happy anthem kind of sing-along song, but at the beginning, which either is good or a bad thing. I mean, I think it's just, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I think, you just let the let the music decide but i do think i naturally consider that yeah. because i i think it I, and i've done it too where i have a sad song that actually sounds poppy you know so yeah yeah for sure yeah what okay. a fun conversation well yeah that, that was that was really fascinating i think yeah i could talk to you guys for like there. five more hours about I, songwriting totally, so, so we, fun we totally could um but I, I think we're gonna wrap it up there because that was some really great examples and and and, and like i said there's a lot there's a lot more to say obviously but <laughs> <laughs> i could go on and on you this was on so on. fun though so <laughs> fun we'll do the extended director's cut um next week um <laughs> So thank you so much, Angela, uh, for, for sharing your process with us and, and for, saying, for sharing your voice memos unheard anywhere else in the world. Yes. What? <laughs> that was first time. You heard it here first. First time <laughs> ever. Ever. So You're thanks for listening, baby. everybody. Yeah. And uh, where, where can our listeners find more about you and your music? Uh, Angela Saini. That's Angela, S-A-I-N-I dot com. If you find me online, it's Angela Saini Music. Uh, pretty much everywhere. Instagram, Twitter. Spotify, YouTube, all of those places. Awesome. And we want to hear from you, our listeners. So please send your comments on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram to at Song Talk Radio or send us an email, feedback at songtalk.ca. And be sure to check out our YouTube channel for live performance videos and full episodes. Subscribe today to the Song Talk Radio podcast on your favorite podcast provider. And don't forget to sign up for our free newsletter at songtalk.ca. CA. You can find links to all the products, books, and web services we mentioned on the show on our resources page, on the website, and wherever you are in the world. Please join us online via Zoom at our next monthly Song Talk Meetup. It's free to join on meetup.com and free to attend the meetup, bring a song and a lyric sheet, and get constructive feedback from other songwriters. Stop by songtalk.ca for the link. Um, actually, we had our September edition of the meetup last night, and we had some really great discussions about, there, there seemed to be a bit of a controversial uh, moment between between one member of the meetup insisting upon storytelling lyrics are very valuable and other people were saying, oh, you can have more abstract lyrics that aren't fully understood and that could be equally valuable. It uh, and, and that person actually messaged me today and said it, it was a good time at the meetup and it got very feisty. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a good meetup then. That's a yeah. good meetup. <laughs> uh, you can follow me at neilmodi.com. You can follow Phil. At philemory.ca. And, and Angela, what's what's your favorite social media channel of all of those? Where do you go the most? I'm getting really into Instagram these days. So Angela Saini Music is where you can find me on Instagram. Perfect. Okay, thanks for listening, everybody. Be sure to stop by the website at songtalk.ca to browse past shows and find out how you can be a guest. Thanks for tuning in, everyone, and keep on writing. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.